Okay, mate, you're back. Good day from Australia, wherever you are. Have my seat. Now, China's chainsaw. Now, we determined last time this is a either a 58cc, which is not true, they're 54 point something, point 0.7, I think, or 62. Normally, there's something written on the crank, on the corner, I should say. So we G and 43. Okay, so it's a 43 stroke. Uh, 34. 34 stroke, that's what it is. Um, so I don't know why they put the 43 in it, but that's besides the point. Um, hopefully, I can show you this. I found this interesting. This is Steve's. Um, Piston on the right. Look at the height difference in the pistons. See where the top ring is? Try and match them up. Look at that. So this piston should produce more uh, compression because it's a, a higher top of the piston. Now I've used this piston before. Brand new. Poured it and was not impressed. I thought, oh crap. Absolute crap. So what I'm going to do, I was going to use... Um, which one's this one? It's the new cylinder. I was going to use this one with that piston that I've hooked inside the, um, the transfer chambers. So if you look through there, I don't know if you can actually see that. Anyway, the transfer chambers there are almost 90 degrees on that lip. See if you can see that lip. On Steve's old one, they got a slight curve. So I'm not going to have to liquid metal, but I'm, I still might play, but it comes down as a slight curve, which is different. So I'm going to use um, Steve's piston again. Yes, Steve's piston again, and see how much compression it's got. Um, then I'm going to pour it. So I'll show you how you pour it, these things. But um, you got to look for these little strange um, things that they make. Some companies make better, I don't think. You know, it's just, sometimes they just try to make one to more power. Now this is at a 52cc. Now it fits. Don't be confused. It's 0.2 of a difference in mils. There's a tiny, tiny bit of play. But in all intents and purposes, if you're stuck, yeah, you can make this work. But there's a difference. Um, Gudgeon pin. Gudgeon pin height slightly different. So it's slightly higher. So if I wanted to, I could probably use this one too, but just put a gasket underneath it. Not quite sure. Something I should try, I suppose, but I need to measure it. They look almost the same, really. They feel like they're the same, but I don't think they are. They're point two, as far as I know, difference. Um, right. Can we see this one? Just these one. Don't know if we can see it. Enough light. Give me light. Maybe. Anyway, that's the cylinders. I've been cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. I normally get sores that are near and new. So I don't have to clean. Clean's a pain in the butt. But Steve, you've done a pretty good job, mate. I've gone further. I will need to clean this again, but I've taken the bulk off everything. I need to wash it again with 100% natural compressed air and clean it all up. So all the parts are ready. So I'll put these all in a basket. Um, someone asked me once, what's porting? And I said, well, porting gives you more power. And I thought about um, this morning. Yeah, it gives you more power, but it also gives you a better fuel economy, better response, and it gets rid of all the... Um, strange manufacturing defects or cast marks so this is a perfect example these saws run all right if you toward them not none of the greatest but guys if you're on a budget like i am um someone feels sorry for you who poured their saw but um it's sort of what you can play with what you can afford what to learn with now you look at that intake manifold there's there's a, a casting mark in there. 
So things like that, that needs to be removed. Now the hardest part of the motor is to suck air, like any motor, because it's not fan force, not like a turbo, nothing like that, which you can't do in a um, two-stroke very easily. Um, so I'll clean that out. I do have another um, intake, but I will clean that. It's nice and stiff. They are sometimes, I think I should show, sometimes the intakes are collapsed around here. They sort of suck in and stuff themselves up, but that one's nice and stiff. Um, I have seen them where they curve in, where they weren't made properly. So I've actually sticked um, uh, the inter inside tube for a um, painted roller, um, for if you're doing rolling your ceilings and stuff, Exten extension cord, extension um, pole. I cut a little piece and put it in here for this side and the port actually, or the source stops it going out. But you have to remove the divider that this, where's the divider? Which this fits through. Um, either that'll make the hole bigger. You'll be careful not to re take the power, um, strength out of these brass pieces. And that can go in further. That gives you a little bit more flow, but it still doesn't make the carb any bigger. So I don't do that unless I, I'm mucking around. I've done all my mucking around, done all my um, research and development. All right, so throw my parts in. I've got um, all the parts off the saw I found inside of the road. So I'll get rid of them, they'll be clean. I've got some um, dog Steve, so I, I fix it up. I have to find another um, washer behind the clutch. Um, for some reason it's worn out. Now your bearing is worn out um, behind your clutch on your drive drum. Um, I found a rim drive, so I'll put a rim drive on the thing. So I fix it up. Clean your air filter. The two oil pumps to choose from. All this stuff in a box. So I like things to be clean, clean. I even put the original pieces of um, foam around the oil pump. This one's the worst one. I might use it, I think. Make sure they're all clean. It's been a second hand motor, so you still got to keep them clean. Right. I could should have cleaned it a bit better, but it's still clean. Your um, air diverter, I've cleaned that. The handle didn't clean the light. Give it a wipe. Right, now, um, uh, to pull this off. Now, where's my hammer? There's my hammer. Now, I'll pull this off. So, there we go. it wasn't very tight. So that's your uh, impact driver, 30 mils. So screw your um, nut back to the level of the bolt there, because you don't want to um, damage your thread. I have done that in the saw before and I was not happy. Ugh. They sometimes get stuck. That other one I found inside the road, oh Christ, that thing was stuck. It finally let go though. All right, I'm gonna support the weight of the saw. So, there you go, simple as that. Because the, um, the shock wipe transfers to the shaft and that falls off. I've cleaned the block up best I can. Right, that's off. So, this flywood, flywheel, I'm going to throw that. I've got another one. Um, I'll probably put it aside just in case, I think, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. They're all the same, but I like the metal ones. These plastic ones, I've seen them break. They're a pain in the ass. There's your keyway, be careful. Wood rough keys. Um, a lot of saws take this size, so don't throw it away. You can keep it as a spare. You can always um, file it back a little bit for um, advanced timing, which I probably will do in this particular saw. But um, if you've got a sharp saw, you can put it in vice cramps, clamps like that. Put the vice cramps into a vice. Hold this where you can get a hold of it. Make sure it's tight. And probably give it um, two or three swipes with the flat file if it's a new file. Do not take too much off. I'm talking like um, one tenth of a mil. It doesn't mean much. That changes the timing. I've done a video before 
where you can set top dead center. You need a degree wheel and all that crap, but just a puff length, so not much. All right, so that part's off. We'll put that tool to one side. Right, I'm just making sure the stupid camera's still working. Right, we have, I forgot about that part there. We have the old free mill wonderful bolts again. Clean these heads out. Might put some compressed air in that. Excuse me guys, I'll buy this out. full length of the screw, the bolt, um, you got more chance to get them out. I love power tools. I do them up by hand though, because you don't, guys, you can strip them. And very, very easy to strip. So these ones here, they're very short, so don't mix them up, because they have nowhere to go except for into the crankcase or do damage, so don't mix them up. Now we're back to the old 4 mil. So change that. Bit up in your oil over your hands. Right, pull these out. That wasn't tight. That wasn't tight at all. That was definitely not tight. Wow. I've seen these ones really tight. That was tight. In other words, it was gonna fall apart anyway. Start sucking air and you want to work out why. That was tight. So the bearing side wasn't tight. Now there's a bit of a gasket just here. So you need to remove that part of the gasket. If you don't, it won't let go. Because there's two halves to the um, crankcase and you want to split them, so you can't have a gasket over the split. Suffering my fingernail. Oh. You gotta be gen gentle not to scratch things. Right, so that's off there. See, it's, most saws are, I think they call it interference fit. When things go on tight, these ones aren't guys, look at that. Straight apart, no gasket glue, nothing. Just checking what gasket we've got. Has it still got a gasket? I can't even tell. Well, no gasket. I've never seen that before. There was the gasket. Yeah, there is a gasket. Very thin. So I'll be careful that I'll clean it up with petrol, degreaser. Um, while I'm at the point, as I'm saying, when you do put degreeing, uh, porting, check everything. Where the pulse line goes through, um, it's starting to collapse just here, so I'll make sure it can actually go through. So um, you got to make sure things stay sealed. So that gas can go around the outside. So I'll go around. Where's my screw off? It goes around here and provides a seal. Now your pulse line takes the pressure from your your crank and throws it up for your pulse line. So. I'll cut this hole here out just a bit and that groove there out. So long as I keep that gasket around, it will stay sealed. And got you gotta make sure that type of stuff is 100%. Now the crank bearing, I found before, Steve, what oil are you using, mate? Let me know, I'd like to know. I pulled this apart the other day, you saw on video. 
I put to one side and did not touch it. So I haven't started the saw, but I got the way you gave it to me, but the bearings were starting to lock up in the crank. Like, seriously, like, I couldn't, I was worried about trying to turn it over. So I put some um, echo oil on the bearings, as you can see. Maybe it's had a little bit of water inside. Yeah, maybe. A bit rusty looking, I don't know. Might be replaced the seals. For this thing though, it's only going to be if you um, muck around so, um, The bearings are starting to lock up, so I put some echo um, two-stroke oil in the crank area. So you can see the oil to lubricate it up, but um, I've never seen it before. Oh, that are you run too lean, Steve. So just let me know what oil you're using, mate. Curious to know what the go is. So that's easy to do, guys. You can pop it in. There's no tools required except for what I showed you. So then we can clean the I can well I can clean this all up and um start working on putting it back together. And I'll do a reverse so you guys can see it. So it's, it's an easy done job. Alright, thanks guys for watching.